welcome to the closing ceremonies of DEF Okay, so you all noticed it was an experiment. I talked about it a little bit in the program. We've never been in multiple hotels like this where you have to actually go out and see the sun. And I was really worried about that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we're, we're, uh, we have a plan for next year that does not involve destroying the sun. Uh, <laughs> Um, <laughs> the orb, as I call it. Um, so, it's, uh, as I mentioned, this is the last time we were here. This is the last year uh, we're at Caesars. And next year we're back to uh, some old favorites. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. But just to let you know, with all of this growth, it allowed us to try a lot of new things. Um, we used over 400,000 square feet of space. And we're across three hotels. The link was the workshop hotel. Um, <clears throat> yay, workshops! <laughs> um, this year also was like a record year for people who made badges. It was crazy. We, how many badges? Over a hundred different badges and then we lost track. That's not even counting the shitty add-ons. And so, yeah, there's a lot and so, um, one thing I wanted to say is, at the last minute, I got this brainwave and I was like, you know what, I should start a museum for all these badges. Why don't everybody just give me badges and I'll put them in a museum? And that was a little kind of half-baked. What I really should have done is set up an area, given you money, you given me badges, and I would have this authoritative collection. But even at the last minute, over 25 of the 100 donated badges to me. I'll collect them, we'll have them on display for next year. And next year, we'll have a proper way for you, if you want, to sell us a badge and we'll create sort of a, a whole history um, of the badges. Because I think it's really cool and unique and I'm afraid we're going to lose some of that history. So I just want to start doing this year after year. So we're going to be doing that. Yay! So. For those of you in your hotel rooms or uh, in the speaking tracks, last year you knew it was kind of a disaster. We had a lot of wiring and cable and interface, laptop video issues. We lost 315 minutes of speaking last year due to technical problems. And this year we lost around 10. Yeah. I don't think anybody even would have noticed, but since we're trying to be more transparent, um, there's 10. <laughs> so we have a tradition here at DEF CON. Our number one, Paul Proctor, will be leaving our team after 20 years. Please, DEF CON, welcome, help us give him a toast to Paul Proctor. Cheers. I'd like to thank all of those that I've shot over the years. Thank you. <laughs> Love you, man. Okay, so we also started last year uh, this transparency report I, I wanted to do. Um, and so we've continued it this year. So uh, I, as I, I predicted, what I, hope, what I hope is happening is that you will see that we are trying really hard to take these issues seriously and that we're trying to act on them and when you do report something, we do something about it uh, if we can and so I'm expecting these numbers to go up year after year after year. As people get comfortable reporting, seeing that we actually are uh, uh, serious about this, I think for the next four or five years we're just going to see these numbers increase until we level off. Uh, and only by sort of facing this problem head on are we really going to know the magnitude of, of the issues. So, um, so the numbers, yes, did go up this year, which I think is good. And we are better at tracking them and we introduced a hotline uh, for people to report things. So to talk about this and deliver this year's uh, statistics, I'd like to bring the head of our SOC up, uh, CJ. <laughs> Right. Well, 
First of all, I want to thank all of our partners. <laughs> I'm not loud enough. First of all, I'd like to thank all of our partners across all of our departments and across the hotel. We wouldn't have been able to be this successful without their help. So, the numbers. We had three reports of harassment, seven reports of sexual harassment, one report of, se of sexual assault, seven medical incidents, none requiring ambulance this time, which is an improvement on last year. <laughs> So either you guys are getting better at drinking, or... Two reports of theft, three reports of vandalism, one case of trespassing, one case of the ceiling falling. Again. Again. One badge maker exonerated. One attack on the casino foiled. One dust storm. <laughs> Attendees of other conferences thinking that we hacked them when we didn't, one. <laughs> oh, no, you just have one. Oh, uh, two of those one that's off, off of here. One warning issued to a member of staff whose conduct wasn't appropriate and didn't represent what we, as a team, would like to represent to you. Right. <laughs> Sportline. We got 62 calls in total. 42 of those were general information calls asking where things were. <laughs> it's kind of to be expected. But we did get three harassment calls, five sexual harassment calls, one call for medical help, and one, one call of concern about drink tampering. And that is awesome. Obviously, we're going to do this again next year, and we're going to scale it up. And I want you guys to use it more. Less information calls, please. We do have an information booth in lots of locations, but, you know, I understand. Um, at the same time, please trust us, call us. We've got trained people there to help you, and we want to help you. So, the next thing is, as you're all aware, there have been a lot of concerns about new processes adopted across the Las Vegas hotels. This isn't just Caesars, it's across all the hotels. Um, these, are cha these changes represent a new reality that all hotels have to face in their work to keep guests safe. We hear your concerns, and Caesars is an extremely receptive partner. They're already engaged with us and working closely with DEFCON management to figure out the best way forward for next year. And as soon as we have an update, we'll let you know. Thanks, and cheers. Even Tyrannosaurus Rex over here likes that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, do we have uh, the info booth, uh, Hacker Tracker? Do we have someone want to come up and come on up? Mello? Mello Man, head of info booth. My last year, too. Yeah. Oh, and your last year. It's my last year as well. Oh, no. Thank you. <laughs> so I don't know what my slides look like because what I sent is not this. Uh, <laughs> so Hacker Tracker we brought on board last year as an official DEF CON thing. This year we started expanding it. Uh, we got both Android and iOS. Next year we'll have actual full website and it'll all look the same. That's my only slide? Yes, that is my only slide. <laughs> All right, so I'm remembering the numbers and I've had a few drinks. My team was great. We had something like 8.6 thousand, or 8,600 Android users and about 6,400 iOS users as active users over this weekend. So that's about half of you out there used Hacker Tracker at least Woo! once. Oh, by show of hands. Okay, so how many out there have used Hacker Tracker? 
I know I have. We also had seven info booths this year. So if you turned around and didn't see an info goon, there was probably in the wrong place. Okay, now, how many of you went to the info booth or talked to an info goon somewhere? Woo! Sweet. So it looks like we're actually doing something decent. Yeah. <laughs> so, thank you. Enjoy the con and... Workshops. So those, some of those you might have noticed with the new hotel space at Lynx, we managed to expand the number of workshops. Um, and this is something we want to keep trying to do. It's just logistically takes a lot of work uh, and effort. But I'd like to introduce the person in charge of workshops. Hi, Hi everybody. <laughs> So, oh yeah, uh, so just out of curiosity, how many of y'all uh, went to a workshop this year? How many of you tried to register for a workshop this year? Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we might need some more room. <laughs> yeah. Oh, bitch. Oh, bitch. Um, so this year we had nearly 2,000 attendees registered. This does not include the folks on the wait list. We had about 100, 150 folks on wait list for each class. Um, we went from Thursday to Saturday, uh, six concurrent tracks, morning, afternoon, four hours each, and we had some amazing workshops. We had folks like Joe Grand, Richard Henderson, all sorts of different folks out there teaching, giving back to the community absolutely for free. Woo! Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yay! Free is good. We like free, yeah. right? <laughs> And we were in our own hotel. We had the fourth floor of the link all to ourselves, which is a far cry from when we were over at Bally's and we were huddled <laughs> over and had a, a really cramped hallway and we made you guys wear those awful wristbands and we'll never do that to you ever again. But, <laughs> woo! And that's it. So I'm looking forward to next year and hopefully we can get more classes out for you and more folks in um, and improve the registration process. Thank you. Right up. Thank you. Okay, Effin, it's the knock. Woo! One, just one thing I want to say is there's no amount of money in my back pocket that can afford the amount of bandwidth you want to use. So I'm done. How's it going, everyone? Uh, here to talk about the knock. Hello? Okay, I have to see the screen. Hi. So, my name is Athan, and I run the NOC here along with Mac. And as usual, I'm going to go through some statistics and the interesting stuff that we did. So, we have two kinds of network here we have the wired and the Wi Fi. So, Wi Fi is mostly for all of you across all three properties, and wired is for everything else that is listed there. I'm not going to go through this. You can download uh, this presentation for the NOC later. So this is how the week went. We had the same amount of days and two more properties to take care of. And we started on Sunday, uh, basic setup. So whatever is green is good. Orange, more or less, and red, that, that was very hard for us. But Sunday, usually good. We work with the hotel IT people and the Encore folks. They're super awesome. And um, was going well until the time crush came and more, and we had to run around the properties and get everything set up. So it's, um, it was good. And then it worked. You can go through this later. Uh, but there was a lot of patching. There was a lot of things. When things were coming up, people couldn't find cables or... Cables were not working, and then we show up, they, they were working, and so on and so forth. So, um, but the code that we used to know if things were working or not working was our friend Guy Fieri. So we had the knock current status, had the happy, the desperate, and the stellar one. <laughs> so, we set up, everything was working, despite some problems that... I'm going to talk a little bit in, in the next slide, but you guys show up, we had 300 mags, 
and Jeff already addressed what has to be addressed on how much it costs to, to do this, a lot of money. Uh, so you guys showed up, you can see, it went straight to 300 meg on Thursday. <laughs> and it never went down. <laughs> so then we went to 350 for about three hours and we saw that it was already pegged. So kindly, DT allowed us to, to go to 400 and it stayed there for the whole weekend. As usual, we have some challenges and, and, and issues other than the unplanned ones, right? So bandwidth is the usual one, actually. Uh, but some fiber connections, they were acting up on us uh, between the IDF and the MDFs, the IDFs and the MDF. Um, so we had a problem with uh, some switches that we swapped, still shit didn't work, and then we found out it was a power issue, but half of the, not half, but part of the hotel and the APs were not working. Um, then we had on Thursday, somebody posted on Twitter, and thank you for that, uh, that multicast was leaking on the, secure, on the secure network to the other users. That was a configuration thing we fixed right away, but totally we overlooked that. Thanks for reporting your names at the end of the presentation. Appreciate that. Um, AP coverage and capacity, like this room with all of you right now, the internet is probably not so good, but it happens. And we had also new APs. Uh, I'm going to talk about that in two slides. And people still don't get 802.1x. I don't blame you because <laughs> we have to fight through this, but if you follow the instructions, mostly, most of the time it works. And Anyhow, so we went for a 10 gig backbone just like last year, but because of the fiber issues, we had to some places go down to one gig. Um, the, internet, I, the internet uplink, I talked about that already um, here at Caesars. So all the other properties will talk like layer three to here, layer, layer three using IPsec tunnels. So everything goes, comes here and then to the internet. We have one internet uplink. About the wired gear, not gonna go through this, but pretty much the core, which is the firewall and the core switch and uh, the firewall, we had like three of those, three sets of those. Free BSD! <laughs> Free BSD! <Yeah. laughs> As for the wireless gear, we also had to have Three, three controllers, and that worked well, and we got a bunch more APs to support the three properties. Thanks, Jeff. Um, so we had a total of 136 APs. The breakdown is there. Obviously, most of the APs are here at Caesars, 20 at Flamingo, 6 at Link. Not going to read this, but we doubled the amount of traffic that you guys use. So last year, we had about four, uh, five point something terabytes, 9.11, which is a weird number to have, but... Um, but that's true and up to like a few hours ago. Um, and there's like some more cool stuff. The other cool stuff is that we have 15,000 different uh, unique DHCP leases. That means that you guys stop doing like DHCP exhaustion attacks and we really appreciate that. So big shout out to my crew. People are awesome. They dedicate the whole week to be here and work hard, long hours, and drink hard at night. <laughs> Don't know how we did this, but we pulled this off. So give it a hand for, for my team, please. Woo! They're awesome. <laughs> so in this room, how many people actually connected to the secure Wi-Fi? How many connected to the insecure Wi-Fi? <laughs> On purpose. <laughs> okay, so again, thanks to my team, everyone. It's super awesome. And my last, almost, uh, that was the last? Yes, that's the last one. So big shout out to DT, Sharel, Nikita, Will. Without you guys, we wouldn't be able to do this, right? We bug you guys a lot to get stuff for us, so thank you. Uh, QM to get our gear safe and we show up, the gear is here, so those guys are super awesome. Uh, Caesars IT, I cannot speak highly, like I can only speak highly of them. 
Sorry, Phil. No, we love them. They, they're super awesome. Whatever we need, they do for us. Same with Encore. Uh, Packet Rat is the guy who tweeted saying, hey, am I supposed to see this traffic here? And then it got quickly to us. So thank you very much for reporting that. We, we fixed the configuration right away. Lockheed, our fearless, fearless leader from the, from the NOC in the previous life, he still runs our server, uh, the DEF CON networking.org. So I had to have some stuff done there and I'm like, Lock, can you help? He's like, of course, right? So he's part of the DEF CON family. Uh, thanks to the bar staff downstairs, that's where we spent most of the night because we didn't go too far. Um, the usual very nice folks who come to the knock and drop snacks for us, they show up, they said they work in, the, in a knock before and they know how like you don't see anything and people only remember about you when shit breaks so they bring us like a few snacks, thanks for that. All the other DEF CON leaders and goons, thank you so much. Like I'm a pain in the ass like to meet that deadlines. I say I need your request by this date. If it doesn't, if I don't get it, it will happen but it will take longer. Everybody does a great job like pushing back and saying I really need this by this date. So thank you very much, okay? And thanks everyone for behaving on the Wi-Fi as much as you can. Okay, this is the first year where DCTV split out and became its own department, got a budget and then spent it all on new equipment. <laughs> so I'd like to introduce Video Man. Hi folks. How's everybody doing? <laughs> Who has a hotel room in Caesars, Link, Harrah's, Paris, Bally's or Flamingo? <laughs> Did any of you watch the talks today from your room? Yeah. Okay. So, I expect more. Jeez. Who's watching now? We got new equipment this year. Um, Morgan, my co-head, actually pushed for this which was awesome. Uh, we also acquired three more new goons because we were just a team of two that were doing all of the TV uh, broadcasting into the, into the DEF CON hotels. As you can see, our, our senior overnight program director is here on the right, right, my right. Our T-Rex program director. <laughs> so, I don't know if you guys got here and we're trying to watch DCTV Thursday. Uh, it was only one track. Unfortunately, we had a little bit of problems with our hardware not showing up. Uh, we had over two months of work trying to get that hardware. Yeah, two months of work trying to get hardware. Six shipments that we tried to receive didn't happen. Uh, Friday morning, I drove 30 minutes north of here to pick up a bunch of hardware, put it in my car, and drive it back down on site. Within 90 minutes of receiving that shipment, we had four of the hotels up, and by about two o'clock, we had all six hotels up and running the tracks in your room. <laughs> yeah. And Jeff, as Jeff points out, this year we're in high def, right? You can actually see all the slides, you can see the video in all the rooms. It's, it's awesome, it's superb. And I would say, also say that, um, whoops. Our, our volunteers here, our new volunteers were a big part of that. We could tell them, hey, go do this and like an hour later it would be done, right? Dedication and, and the ability to just pick up and, and roll with things is very important. Raise your hand over there. Thank you. We figured we're broadcasting to 18,000 hotel rooms about probably 22,000 TVs because some rooms have at least two or more TVs. 99.9% .9 uptime. There was a little glitch uh, Saturday morning, but we figured it out. People were on the Twitters telling us, hey, we don't, we don't have audio. We were able to fix, figure it out and fix it very quickly. We also streamed DC 101 and track one to the internet for the entire time that they were actually on, which was pretty fun. 
Uh, we, we figured out we got about 4,000 viewers online throughout the whole conference. Obviously DC 101 was very popular. So. All right. Uh, so if you want, dctv.defcon.org is where the URLs will live when the conference is running. And you can hit us up on Twitter, DEFCON TV, DEFCON underscore TV. Thank you. We get up in the morning so you don't have to. Okay, so we're going to move into uh, Zant. Do you want to talk about the villages? Not, not really. <laughs> okay, so this year, uh, with the new space, we had the opportunity to have a record number of villages. And so uh, that meant Zant had to deal with almost double the amount of logistics uh, requests. And because a lot of the villages were new, the whole process was new. Um, so it was just a lot, of, uh, a lot of work, a lot of answering questions, a lot of setting expectations, and a lot of last minute room changes as we were trying to figure out what kind of space uh, some of the villages needed. So what we're really interested in hearing about is which villages worked and uh, which ones didn't, and we really want to uh, make sure that the, the winners uh, have the space and the resources to thrive. So I'd like to have Zant have some, uh, have some words here. <laughs> Thank you. Hopefully everybody enjoyed the villages. Uh, as DT said, we're a new division. I wouldn't have been able to do any of it without my two leads, which were runner-up, bruiser, and I'd like to thank the entire rest of my team because they're the ones that made it all possible. They answered all the villages' calls for needs. All I did is ran the entire weekend. I can honestly say I was so busy running, I, don't, I did not hit my final village until uh, 2 o'clock today. So yeah, all I got to do is say thank you for you guys. I really didn't have much else to say. Thank you. And, <clears throat> you the yeah, that's why I didn't want to talk. My voice has been gone for three days. And yes, I already know every village needs more space. <laughs> okay, data duplication village. Um, they added talks this year. Uh, and unfortunately, we also had some lost duplicators that reduced our uh, our ca total capacity. We want to. Nobody's here. I will talk about it. Um, so you can just quickly look at the statistics. Um, Infocon archive collection continues to grow. The hash tables you can see remain popular. Um, and uh, we had to turn away. Uh, we stopped accepting drives around 450 drives. We only got to about 300 and some odd drives. 300, one, two, three, yeah, 319 dupes. Um, and so next year we're going to address this by repairing the machines that got damaged and finding the machines that got lost. Um, so it's really fascinating that even in this age of high speed internet, there's nothing that beats a high drive duplicator or an airplane full of hard drives. Okay, I'd like to go to contests and events. Mr. Grifter. I don't know what that was. <laughs> Made me a little nervous. Um, so hi, uh, I'm Grifter, uh, the department head for contests and events. This year, I love you too, deeply. Um, this year, we had over 50 different contests and events. Every year, I always say um, when we get up here, if you guys have an idea for something that you want to do, that you just want to try out, it can be the most absurd thing you can think of, but if it has legs, then, then we'll, we'll add it. It has legs. <laughs> Fantastic. See? Just fucking DEF CON, you know? Like, um, so we had, we had 42 um, actual contests this year, 12 of which were new. So you guys really took that to heart. Last year I got a ton of, uh, of different submissions. We took a dozen of the best ones and most of that was just due to space. I think we're collecting all the hotels on the strip, like they're fucking Pokemon cards now for DEF CON. So, um, so maybe if we got some more room for additional contests next year, hit me up. Uh, just send an email to contest at and, uh, and tell us what your idea is. We'd love to hear it. Um, yeah, I guess 
can we get a huge, huge round of applause for all the organizers of, of the contests and events? Like, they put in a ridiculous amount of work. And we open up the call for contests on January 1st, so um, I guess that's when DT thinks I've, I've had enough of the holidays. Um, and my inbox is what lights up like a Christmas tree. And then they just start hammering me with all the requests to try to make things the best they possibly can for you. So, um, so I really appreciate that effort, and I hope you guys do too. Um, there are way too many to go through individually. Um, so I'm just going to skip it, and we'll come back in a second for, the, for those black badge events. This year, um, for vendors, we had this, it's like we have more space, but it got absorbed very quickly. It was crowded in the vendor space. And here are a list of uh, the vendors. And what we're noticing is this year was the first year we noticed um, we had to turn away some vendors that wanted to provide cloud service-y things. And we really had to explain to people, no, you, you need to be sort of part of the community. You've got to engage with the community somehow not just show up and give away a free cloud login to your vulnerability scanning platform. And, uh, and that pissed off some people, but if you can't, sh yeah, good. If you can't show up and engage with the community, um, we'd rather have empty tables than full tables. And so we're always on the lookout. <laughs> <You know. laughs> so I had this uh, epiphany, it was, and I forget who, it wasn't really my epiphany, I, I read it somewhere and I can't remember where I read it, but it was essentially a reporter was talking about their experience at DEF CON in the vendor area and they said bring a lot of cash because you're going to want to buy all the stuff that you don't ever want to show up in your Amazon shopping cart history. <laughs> and I was like, exactly. We need to find those vendors and get them to DEF CON because we don't want them in your Amazon shopping cart. So. If you can think of dodgy, interesting vendors, <laughs> send them our way. <laughs> okay, let's hear from the, the arts and entertainment. Do we have, do we have the arts and entertainment here? Come on, guys, artists, okay, I want to try to wing it. They're still asleep, oh, that's right. Um, besides the roof coming down for the second year in a row, uh, <laughs> during the fat base of Juno reactor last night. Um, you can see our lineup this year. We always try to have a really uh, community driven track of artists from the community and then we also try to find some cool either retro or, or current acts that you might not normally uh, uh, come across and we want to expose you to. And, uh, and then we also try to release every year an audio, a music track, uh, CD or uh, original soundtrack. So, by show of hands, how many people appreciate or actually ever listen to the DEF CON music CD? <laughs> Woo! Okay. Yeah, these people donate their music to us, we, we compile it, we master it, and then it ends up going up uh, for sale with the proceeds uh, going to the EFF. And, um, and we just plan to keep doing this until you guys stop caring, because I think it's cool. There's really an intersection between sort of the culture and music. And you can see that by the number of bands and DJs uh, and acts that we have at DEF CON. Um, this year Juno Reactor was awesome. How many people managed to see Juno Reactor? Yeah. So this was a big growing, uh, this was like the biggest name band that we've ever done. And boy did we learn a lot. <laughs> I mean, that, you might not have realized it, but that lighting setup was fantastic. It was fantastic because it was like a whole project in and of itself just to get the lighting set up. Uh, corporate accounts to get uh, CO2 cylinders to fire off smoke things. Did you realize that the misting machine is the same as smoke and it will set off fire suppression systems? <laughs> right? So you have to have fire trucks ready in the parking lot when you turn off the fire suppression system and a fire person standing there making sure it's not really on fire. And it's just like thing after thing after thing just for some guys to get up on stage and rock it. And so I was so happy that everybody got to enjoy 
Juno reactor, and all I saw was like fire suppression, smoke detector, you know. <laughs> it was crazy. I just, I just, I just want to. And the other thing that was super cool about Juno reactor is they gave us permission to record it. So we're going to release it. Yeah, that's really cool. Every one of the other big performers have these writers that say, we can't record it, we can't think about recording it, you know. Where Juno Reactor is fantastic to work with. So we're going to try to work with bands in the future that allow us to record it and release it. Okay, Pyros, anybody want to come up and talk about the parties? So parties spun out this year also into its own department because we had multiple properties and so much going on. So I'd like to introduce Pyro and his team. How's it going, everybody? Do you have a good DEF CON? Excellent. So I, I've worked with DEF CON now. This is like my 19th year, uh, 20 years going to the con, but 19 years on staff. And I always just have Jeff like bounce me around in different places where he wants me. And last year he came at the end of con. I told him I wanted to come back and I wanted to contribute and participate again. And he said that the big goal that they wanted to do with this new department was bring back the feel of the old DEF CON parties. Lexus Park days, you guys, who was there? You remember what it was like and that's what we wanted to recreate this year. So I have a small staff and uh, they are exceptional. Uh, right here, existence was our number one. Most departments have a department head and a second. He is by far the number one. This man did almost all of the actual labor and work to make this stuff happen this year. So I'm gonna hand it over to him, but thank you very much. So how many of you guys came out to the parties that was not here at Caesars, other than Hacker Karaoke, and a couple smaller ones, but over in Flamingo? Awesome. We're hoping to make it bigger, badder, and better next year. Unfortunately, the 303 pool party had to get moved inside due to safety, uh, so we apologize that we couldn't throw the large pool party we wanted to throw. Hopefully next year that will all to happen and you guys can come out, swim, and drink and party. So feel free to contact us with parties and we'll make it happen and uh, we'll get it out there. Thanks very much, guys. Okay, so we're into the part where we're talking about black badge contests. So this is this, is this year's black badge. And uh, I'll just tell you a quick little story about the black badge uh, for this year. Uh, it's electronic and it's also analog. And uh, the has uh, parts in it that have been reclaimed uh, electronic components uh, from the Apollo ground station tracking stations from back in the day. Some of that stuff got surplused. People took the components off and some of it's ending up on the black badge. Also, I'm going to have up here on stage later after we're over in case you're interested. I wanted to create like, how much more black can it be? I tried, I tried to get the blackest black. And uh, the blackest black is a black called uh, Vantum Black and absorbs all visible frequencies. Um, but uh, you can't get that, sorry. <laughs> um, so the next best black is another black um, that's really, really expensive for every ounce of this paint. And so uh, the toy makers who designed this bought an ounce of this super black ink and we painted it and we compared it to just like black PCB. Not really that different. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll see the side by side comparison but we're like, ah, we don't want to really spend that much money for something where you, you can't, unless I told you that, you would never know. Um, <clears throat> So that's why uh, maybe in the future if we can work something out, we might try to get a Vantum Black. That would be super cool. Um, so black badges get you in for life. Uh, they're generally, uh, they're always given to the winning team of Capture the Flag. And then after that, it's really questionable who gets to win them. We vary it by contest. Uh, Grifter makes the call uh, on who gets the contest, who gets one based on the quality the amount of effort that goes into, the technical complexity. Uh, and so I'm going to hand it over to him to talk about the badges and start handing them out. So Grifter. Grifter. <laughs> 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 
Trevor, little buddy. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, so as Jeff mentioned, we the black badges are are something that go to contests who put you know exceptional work in. That doesn't mean that the other contests do shit work. Um, we have only a handful. We do that on purpose to make it special. We also do it so that you don't know what competition is going to have a black badge that year. We want you to compete in the contest that is, you know, your favorite, that is the technology that you like or, um, frankly, the shit show that you enjoy the most. Um, and so, so you never know what's going to have a black badge outside of, um, of the CTF. So we have uh, a handful, and those get picked, and no one knows until literally four hours ago. So not even the organizers know. Um, I'm going to start bringing them up, and they're going to start telling you what their uh, contestants did to earn those. So first, hack the planet. Hack the planet! I'm uh, really, really excited to be able to say hack the planet on a DEF CON stage with a dinosaur in my ear. Um, I'm Bo Woods for ICS Village. On behalf of the other founding members, Bryson Bort, uh, Tom Van Norman, and uh, Larry Van Andewiel, uh, I'm really, really excited to be here to talk to you about our first ever black badge giveaway. Uh, if you didn't get down there to see us uh, and you don't know us, uh, there you go. ICS Village is, uh, we incorporated as a 501c3 nonprofit educational organization. We want to have experiential learning and learn by doing. Basically, we want to get shit done and not go out and spread a bunch of FUD, right? So, woo. so this year we had uh, some really cool stuff down there. If you didn't get over there, we had a simulated water treatment facility. We had a simulated power plant. We had a bunch of cool stuff. Uh, and our CTF, obviously, called uh, Hack the Planet. Hack the planet. Um, Hack the planet! Hack the planet! So we had uh, over a hundred different flags that we could run in this. We had over a hundred different people participating. Uh, it was really, really cool. Uh, we did a bunch of stuff. We had uh, ICS Rex, as we nicknamed them. Um, next year, we're, we're going to be back. We're going to be doing this again. Hopefully, we get another black badge. Uh, we're going to do it even better, and we'll have twice as much monster. So our winners this year, uh, it was really hard fought race, but we've got a couple that we want to point out. Number two winners, Rockettes times two. Raise your hand. Woo! And then the, uh, the first place, the winners, were hashtag fuzzy snuggly duck, and they get our first ever black badge. And that looks badass. Thank you. Hack the planet. What are you doing? Spoilers. All right, this is a, a first year contest, but they put a significant amount of effort into it. You may have seen people wandering around with the NPC. Hello, my name is NPC on their shirts. Uh, so they included a bunch of other folks in the contest itself and made them not only, you know, folks who were competing, but you could also participate as, as part of the contest. So I thought that was really cool. So welcome to the stage, Dungeons at DEF CON. Thanks, DEF CON. Um, so D&D was uh, Dungeons and Dragons kind of inspired multi-layer crypto interactive puzzle campaign contest. So the, uh, the teams were competing in all these various side quests that included crypto puzzles, all sorts of cool things interacting with NPCs. And then they all had to coalesce together and solve this main quest puzzle uh, where they were trying to identify a, a wizard that was taking over DEF CON played by... Grifter. <laughs> um, our teams did a fantastic job. We ended up having to turn away like 30 teams. We capped registration at 38. 
Um, amazing turnout. We were so proud of everyone that competed. We had some people do amazing things. Uh, one of the guys, IF, ended up flooding his hotel room, trying to steam open a letter that he had to figure out what's inside without letting us know he, we, we, he had gotten into it. We had another team that built a paper Enigma machine to try and solve a puzzle that had absolutely nothing to do with Enigma. <laughs> But mad style there. They confirmed with the crypto privacy village that it actually functioned. So mad props there. Our, there we go. Our winning team though, I mean, wow. First of all, two Roots Asylum veterans. So that lets you know the caliber of people that are coming out of that village, man. Watch out for these kids. Um, they just destroyed things. It was amazing. Um, and they have one of the coolest names, I thought. So our winning team, Murder Hobos. What I like about a couple of kids winning a black badge is how much it's going to cost Jeff. <laughs> For life, baby. Can we give it to the oldest guy? <laughs> yeah, the oldest guy. He looks pale. Oh, that's all of us. All right, um, these guys took a break last year, and we missed them incredibly. Um, so... We reached out and we were like, are you guys coming back? And they were like, yeah, we miss you too. And so, uh, so back they came and they were swamped the entire time uh, the contest area was open. So uh, let's hear how they did it. Open CTF. So Open CTF was a collaboration this year between VAND and DC562. We had a great turnout and would like to thank Grifter and the entire contest staff for keeping the area at a reasonable volume between the hours of 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. <laughs> the contestants who played OpenCTF ranged from complete beginners to previous DEF CON CTF winners. In order to win OpenCTF, your team needs to have depth across multiple technology disciplines, including binary reversal, cryptography, web hacking, networking, and forensics. Our teams demonstrated that skill over two days, hacking through several dozen challenges, with the contest being neck and neck until the last hour Saturday night. In keeping with the principles of OpenCTF, we would like to call out the three teams that submitted the best write-ups. BotchSec, Girls Taking Over, and Donkey Kick. We will be retweeting and, and posting those write-ups so that you can, if you're new to CTFs, you can take a look at those. And for our top three teams, in third place, we had Ghost of Brittany. For second place, we have an open CTF regular and previous winner from Seattle, Neg9. Yep. They had a, we, we released the source code to our scoreboard about four hours before the game ended and challenged the teams to hack it. They, they actually did and, and claimed those points, uh, which put them into first place with about an hour left. Unfortunately for them, uh, another team uh, scored at the end. And to introduce our winners, who were previous third place finishers of OpenCTF from Europe, not problem. Sweet, sweet Hadnaggy. 
I, they need no introduction. Social engineering CTF. <laughs> okay, we got some stats for you. Uh, we had almost double the space this year. That was pretty awesome, huh? That was really awesome. But you guys still waited three hours in line, so sorry about that. Uh, really, shout out to my team, man. These guys are just awesome, aren't they? Anyone who visited the village, come on, they're awesome. Okay, here's some stats on the competition. Uh, the contestants spent over 680 hours in doing OSINT just for the competition, the three weeks prior to handing their reports in, which constituted 456 pages of OSINT that we had to review uh, before they can get in the booth to make their calls, which is just ridiculous. Um, 280 minutes of calls were made during the SECTF um, just for over the last two days, and we played 40 hours of clutch in the village. So I think that's the best statistic of all, if you ask me. Um, one quick story, if I have a, just 30 seconds, the best story so far of SECTF this year. Um, some contestant uh, got a company, J.B. Hunt, and they're supposed to do a little research to get numbers to call. And he did research and found a person called J.B. Hunt, but he didn't know it was a person because when he checked the number, if it was real, the guy answered J.B. Hunt. So he hung up because you're not supposed to communicate before the CTF. And he called this guy, and a guy answered J.B. Hunt. And he's like, you got three minutes of time? He's like, I'm watching the Cubs game. I'll give you two minutes. And we're like, wait, this isn't, after about a minute and a half, we realized the guy doesn't even have a computer. He doesn't even own a computer. And I'm like, cut it, don't make the call. And the guy's still trying to get flags out of him. But so we found Mr. Hunt is, Mr. Hunt is a little vulnerable. So we're going to help him out afterward. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow. You may be familiar with this wonderful woman standing to my right, Rachel Faber Toback. She has taken second place again. So we have a, another one. You're going to have a collection of these. I mean, seriously, she has a wonderful little award plus a challenge point for you here. Awesome. There you are. And and this is also another first for SC Village. Um, this is the first year where we had two women dominate the competition. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you may be saying, what? He's an ugly woman. <laughs> That's because Whitney Maxwell, who won uh, the SECTF first place by a huge landslide, she couldn't make it. She had to travel home. So uh, Patrick is here uh, accepting the, the things for her. So what we have for Whitney, by the way, this is super special, super special. Okay, I hope she likes bourbon. This is a TX brand bourbon. It's been customized by Human Hacker and something really cool. This is the first year SECTF t-shirt. I had one left. We sent it to them and they made it into a cap for, for the bottle. So yeah, this is an SECTF t-shirt. That's for Whitney. We get the awesome uh, human, ha human Hacker Award for being the first place. And this is our ninth year doing this. So we got number nine challenge coin for Whitney, too. And then, you know, Whitney's not here, so maybe I should just hold on to this for her. <laughs> just, just saying. No, I won't do that. And then, of course, Whitney gets the awesome black badge. All right. We'll see you next year, guys. Thanks. Thanks, guys. All right. So, um, again, what, what, what are you pointing at? You're here. All right. Um, so you may have seen these guys before. They put together one hell of a competition. Um, obviously, IoT is something that we hear about day in, day out, and they set up um, essentially a gauntlet of ridiculousness for their attendees to jump through. Um, they leave educated and then sad about the world. Um, I'll let them tell you why. So hopelessly broken. Woo! I'm going first. Go 
All right, hello everyone. I'm so happy to be here. This is what, our third? Yep. Okay, it's our third black badge. It's really awesome to be here. Um, we had a crazy contest this year. Uh, we were tracking some of the targets that were being attacked and we got up to about 51,000 uh, attacks launched on our network. So that's really impressive. So thanks to everyone who played and contributed to that onslaught. Um, I want to give a round of applause to everyone who played. So in third place with 37,000 points is uh, Quantum Blockchain. So congratulations to them. In second place, um, they did complete all of the devices. So they did, uh, you know, pwn all the devices. How many devices did we have? 18. Uh, no, no. 22. <laughs> 22 devices. So they got, they, they pwned all 22 devices, but they came in second because they did not pwn them first. So that was uh, Pony IP. So a round of applause to them. Now, in first place is a team that, you know, has been playing for a while and they finally really, I think, you know, they got it, right? And they had a great run this year. And once they got first place, Saturday afternoon, they completed everything first. Uh, they, they were like, we're canceling our flights because we want to stick around just to see if we get to be on stage and receive a black badge. Woo. So thank you for canceling your flights and joining us on stage uh, is team, oh, Nop, 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 X90, X90, X90. Yep, they're just going to briefly say thank you and what they plan to do with the prize money. Yeah, so just quickly, uh, I want to thank, thank ISC and the IoT Village for putting together the CTF. Uh, congratulations to the other guys that competed alongside of us. You really kept our hearts pounding in our chests up until that, the last moment that we got the last box. Um, we talked about what we're going to do with the prize money as a team. We're going to be dedicating it, going back into acquiring more IoT devices for more research and testing, and hopefully we can add to the number of devices that are in the CTF for next year. All right, our next uh, first year contest and a black badge contest at that. These guys got so much praise from the attendees who um, were competing. They absolutely loved what they put together. If you made it into the contest area, this was uh, toward the back. There was a plane and a train and once again, sadness. Um, so uh, we'll bring to the stage Red Alert ICS CTF. Uh, oh, hi, 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 안녕하세요. Uh, we are from Korea and Singapore. Yeah, South Korea indeed. Uh, we are uh, very excited to introduce Red Alert ICS City of Adapcon. It's the first time. Uh, anyway, thank you so much, uh, Grifter and Orgun to give us a good chance. Uh, this is CTF is based on real world uh, scenarios and uh, including simulation of uh, aircraft, smart city, railway, and traffic sign, and also power plant. Uh, as we are IT security engineers, not only ICS, but also we are focused on how to uh, break through from IT system to OT system using air gap. Uh, bypassing tricks. Yeah. Anyway, Ben, we'll talk more. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, we had two and a half days of challenge. Our part participants, they were very happy trying to play our CTF. So uh, yesterday, we actually released a very special challenge, which is a DEF CON special. We had the teams... Uh, had, a, had to chuck down a beer in 10 seconds for 3,000 points. So, <laughs> so four teams participated, uh, two team won and two team lost. <laughs> so the two team that lost had to lose 3,000 points as well. And our leader, which was the winner, they lost their lead yesterday after a two days lead. But eventually, today morning, they took back the lead and they are the first place. Yep. So, okay. 
Yep, so I'll just announce our uh, top three places. The third place was actually Team Rebate. They had uh, 20,000 points. The second place was uh, Noob Country. They had about 25,000 points. And the first place we have CTF SG with, with uh, 28,000 points. So. <clears throat> So, so we have the winners here. Yeah? And yeah. and also, the black badge goes to them. They have been playing uh, non-stop for two and a half days. Uh, I personally uh, seen them done the work, and they are really very persistent in trying to hack our simulations. So, and also, since this is the first time we have brought, uh, we have uh, held this CTF and DevCon, so we are actually being, uh, we are very honored to be standing here on the stage at the closing ceremony. So we'd like to thank everyone that participated, came to our booth, and also Grifter, Brian, and all the other goons again. Thank you. All right, uh, I, I love this contest. So these guys um, put together a, a bunch of mini games, and essentially, it's I mean, it's a, a a bunch of points from all these different things. So if you suck at one thing, you can redeem yourself somewhere else, uh, and I think that's great because it's uh, sometimes you go into a CTF and you just feel beat down. You don't uh, you hit something that you can't get past, and then you're stuck forever. Uh, this makes sure that that, that doesn't happen. And, uh, and I love that about these guys. They've been on the stage many times before, and here they are again, Warlock Games. All right, good afternoon, DEF CON. Um, you know, you get to that point where uh, Red Bull uh, just isn't enough anymore, right? You need to find a different energy drink. So if anybody's got ideas, let us know. Um, it's been a long weekend. Brando. Brando. So, um, <laughs> yes. So this is our fifth year uh, coming to DEF CON as a contest. And standing here on the stage uh, for our third uh, black badge is just as humbling as receiving the first. So we're very appreciable and uh, honored to be here. Special thanks to uh, Dark Tangent, Grifter, and uh, Pandero. So we started Friday at 11 a.m. and uh, ended Sunday at 12. We actually extended it two hours uh, so that we could get the last bit of points in there. So the kinds of things that we do are the things that you would expect in the CTF. There's the binaries, the reverse engineering, the web. And the challenges that these guys had to go after this year dealt with the Global Government Cybersecurity Enforcement Agency, because we all want to hack the government, right? Um, so they had to go against those guys and Torbot Enterprises uh, as part of their web services. Um, they had uh, to reverse engineer binaries, which were authentication tokens for the uh, GovSec.agency. Um, so that was the onboard items. Then we had things at the table, the physical security side, right? So they had the lock picks that they had to go after. And if you didn't do so well at lock picking, you could always jump on the end of the table and play a few rounds of Fortnite. Any Fortnite players out here? Yeah, a couple. Not my game, uh, but uh, you know my my uh, youngest son could probably uh, he, he definitely uh, has it. Um, so we uh, offered a lot of different points. Uh, we even had a T-shirt uh, for uh, DefCon 26. We always uh, had a T-shirt going. This year had a puzzle on it as well. So even if you didn't do anything with all the other challenges, you could at least solve that and get some points on the board. Um, so our third place team scored 2,350 points, uh, and they actually led a good portion of the way, which was uh, uh, pretty impressive. They're a team uh, out of uh, Europe somewhere. Um, and, uh, <laughs> we won't specify exactly where they're from or who they are, but uh, uh, we've seen them before, and uh, they played a fantastic game. Uh, that was uh, Dank Memes. Um, I think they may have already departed. Um, our second place team with 2,425 points was Ambush. 
And uh, they played a phenomenal game as well. And the lead actually swapped within the last hour of the game. Our first place team, PTFS, with 2,550 points. DEFCON, thank you very much, and we look forward to seeing you next year. What are you shaking your head no? Don't shake your head no. Just get up here. Wireless CTF. Hey, DEF CON. So we're back again. I think this is our 13th year running the uh, Wireless Village, and we're super psyched. we got more space this year. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. We really do. Um, every year we try and make some changes, and this year we did. Um, we had over 20 foxes go out over the course of the con, which meant that our guys that were doing well... I'm getting books thrown at me. Yep. Wow. Um, the guys that were doing well and the gals that were doing well were up for 24 hours a day for three days straight. The foxes were 24-7. When they went to sleep, they became hide-and-seeks. We also partnered, thanks to HiWiz, with the furries. So we actually had foxes that were foxes. Yeah, that happened quite a bit. And thanks to RenderMan, I must say, there was a IOD fox, if you don't know what that is. It was a butt plug that was walking throughout the conference, inserted and being spoken to during the course of the uh, village. I'll let that one sink in, literally. Where? So, so that being said, we had one team that came back, uh, came over uh, from the East Coast with us, comically speaking, um, and they just tore it up. So software-defined radio, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. We're doing full-on unbeaconing Bluetooth tracking on a phone, and they were extremely successful with it. So I want to bring up the Majestic 12. Oh, one other thing, real quick. So we had one other, to one other contest that was new this year. We had King of the Hill. We've been trying to do it for many, many years. We had a router running 24-7. It was up for 51 hours. 48 of those hours, there was connections every minute. We had three hours of downtime for the entire conference of people trying to attack it. So we've just, we've expanded quite a bit, and we've done a whole lot. We've got some amazing sponsors, and now we've got a black badge. So... Majestic 12. It's ticking. I want to give this away. It's ticking. I would just have a couple quick words, and that's basically just install pen too. That's. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks again, Jeff. Good job. I'm surprised you're still awake. Yeah. yeah. Hard. That's pretty impressive. All right, so these next guys uh, come out of the packet capture village. Um, they, woo! Yeah. Um, I, I also like packets. Um, so a couple of years ago, they asked, well, how do we become a black badge contest? And they had multiple contests that were going on in there. And I said, well, all of these contests only take a couple hours for the attendees to compete in. So what, what we want for a black badge contest is something that you really have to invest time in. You hear about these contests where people compete all weekend or for some 24 or 36 hour stretch. So we were, um, we were discussing it and they were like, okay, I think we can make it harder. And then a couple of years ago they just combined every contest they had into one mega Voltron-like contest. Um, for some reason they haven't stopped making it harder. <laughs> so. Every year they just up their game and up their game. And this year it was difficult enough to knock out um, some really veteran competitors. So I think they may have found the right spot. So uh, up here to talk about it, capture the packet. Hey everyone. Uh, this year, Packet Hacking Village was insane. I want to thank the uh, DEF CON staff. It was an awesome space. Um, one thing we, uh, we kind of noticed, you know, in, in the terms of villages and 
Uh, anything under a thousand is a village. Anything over that is a town. And I think we've hit town because <laughs> we're crushed in that space again. How many of you were at the Pack and Hacking Village at one point? Right by raise a hand. All right. So um, thanks again. That was an amazing space. Um, we want to thank all of our volunteers, the, the people that made it happen. We had over 100 volunteers, our ops crew that nobody sees but makes it happen in the background, uh, B-Box and Preteration, and all the, the leads that were there, my, my partner in crime, C-Docs, just was awesome. Um, so this year we, we changed it up a little bit. So to make it so that more people compete, could compete in Capture the Packet, what we did was we made three events. So we had Packet Inspector, where you've never touched anything before, you want to try, you sit down, you play. Then we made Packet Detective, you go to the next step, middle, you play, you learn, we have people there teaching you, and then when you're ready, you jump into the deep end. Um, as Grifter mentioned, I think we made the deep end a little too deep, but uh, we intend to make it deeper, so bring it. <laughs> um, and then, uh, as he mentioned, it's a little of everything. We have a lot of crazy things in there, data exfiltration, custom protocols, custom crypto, uh, yeah, we rolled our own crypto, uh, crypto and um, we had some ridiculous stuff in there. So the steganography in there, um, we had a great time putting stuff all over the place. Um, and out of the entire conference that played it, all you know, the hundreds of people that competed, we only had 26% of the challenge solved. So maybe a little too hard, maybe a lot. What do you think? Keep it there. Be mean. Torture. Yeah. Okay. Keep being mean. Noted. Uh, so, so we had we had uh, companies coming up to us through this whole thing. Are like, will you share the winners with us? We want to hire them. So, not giving out any information to anybody. We'll let them know. Hey, there's people that want you, but no. Um, but we had uh, this absolute awesome team. They competed a couple years ago and won prior to being a black badge and, you know, had the pouty face and they came back year after year and they finally got it. So, the, like, this is like their, what, fourth, fifth year? Something like that playing it. So, uh, uh, I want to, you know, really thank the, uh, the team and then their, uh, uh, their name is What is a Packet? And here is their prize, Wado Cash. Oh. And Last badge of that. Right. Thank you guys. Put it on red. Yeah. And one, yeah, one last thing for Wall of Sheep your APIs are leaking like hell. See ya. Oh. And now. And now, yes. Uh, so, um, you, you may know these guys. You may not. Um, they call themselves the Order of the Overflow. And even if you don't know them, you know their contest. Capture the flag. I'm going I'm to put that Hello, hackers. I'm Zardas. And this is the Order of the Overflow. We have been here among you since DEFCON 9. We have been playing CTF since DEFCON 12. We were raised in this community. And now we are professors, freelance hackers, engineers, and we are still here every year playing DEFCON CTF and now hosting. We played DEFCON CTF for a long time and when legit BS the prior organizer stepped down. We felt the call to step up and uh, carry on this tradition of an awesome game for some of the best hackers around. We had three guiding philosophical principles. One, we wanted to be inclusive. We wanted to raise the inclusivity and the positivity of this community. Uh, two, let me look them up. <laughs> Uh, we want it to be inspirational. We want to inspire the next generation in a similar way that the amazing hackers we saw as we were walking around DEF CON 9, completely clueless, inspired us. And number three, we wanted to innovate, responsibly innovate the game into new areas, new formats, 
new types of challenges. And so I'll talk a bit about the innovations that we did uh, this year. Um, one was kind of uh, scooped a little bit uh, by an earlier CTF. We integrated cap uh, capture the flag. We integrated capture the flag. Uh, we integrated King of the Hill uh, and attack defense services together. So in traditional attack defense, teams attack each other to steal information um, and try to defend themselves against the attacks of other teams. With King of the Hill, teams additionally had to create the most elegant or the best solution. Uh, additionally, we uh, tried to have a much, much higher emphasis on raw hacking skill. Uh, to do this, for example, we delayed the release of network traffic significantly to force hackers to come up with novel original exploits instead of script kidding them off the wire. Um, right, and third, with the rise of automation, the Cyber Grand Challenge recently and all of this uh, awesome new technology, which is really cool, it has become much harder to actually tell where the human skill ends and the automated skill begins. In many contexts, this is great, but in CTF, we wanted to find the best humans and identify, even among them, who the best hackers are. And so we heavily limited the uh, what is probably currently the most advanced part of this automation, which is automated patching. We heavily limited patching so that teams could only patch a certain amount of bytes per service. So we had a service with multiple vulnerabilities, for example, where teams had to patch in under 10 bytes. And they did, which was incredible. So <laughs> with all of this, uh, of course, we w had to keep uh, DEF CON CTF as an, this awesome top CTF. Uh, and with this came some traditions, which uh, we embraced. We had multiple qualifying events the best CTFs in the world, from which the best hackers in the world qualified for DEF CON, um, hosted by awesome, amazing conferences and awesome, amazing uh, teams. We had our own qualifying event, uh, and overall, uh, over 600 teams played in our event, of which 24 qualified together with the prequels. Um, and then we made this game, and uh, it was an absurd amount of work, um, and uh, all of these uh, fine hackers can complain about it a lot more than I can, but we haven't slept in, you know, six months. Um, we, uh, of course, had issues uh, with our first year running this. Uh, it turns out when you invite the best hackers in the world, and you invite them all to connect to your network, and you invite them all to attack everything, uh, shit catches on fire. Um, so we had this awesome uh, situation, set of situations where we would be fixing stuff as it was burning, uh, and overnight the teams would be hacking things and we would be fixing things. And then in the morning they would hack the things we fixed. It was pretty incredible. Uh, so everyone had a great time. Before I get to uh, announcing... Oh, yes, and we captured, of course, all the packet uh, traffic. We captured all game events, uh, we accumulated an enormous amount of uh, data overall that we hope would be very useful to the community going forward to analyze how top hackers perform. Um, so before moving on to announcing the winners, um, I would like to uh, give special thanks to a number of uh, people. Uh, for one thing, the entire DEF CON crew, uh, and the goons, Forkus, Brian, Grifter, Dark Tangent. I'd like to thank also Encore. Uh, they helped us set up our AV uh, stuff, which hopefully the hackers found extremely distracting and you found entertaining. Um, We'd like to thank Legitimate Business Syndicate, which is the prior DEF CON CTF organizer. Uh, yeah. I was busy to call out Gyno, Vito, uh, Sir Goon, Lightning, and HJ there. Amazing set of people. Um, and special thanks to our uh, poor undergrads that we brought with us 
Um, these ASU students, I don't know if they're here, but they, uh, we basically enslaved them for a weekend. They were uh, running cables, running water, running coffee. They were running everything except for digital uh, services. That was us, unfortunately. Um, and we'd like to thank our families who haven't seen us at all, you know, again. Um, and I'd like to thank my team here. Uh, none of this would be possible without them. So we have Slipper, incredible hacker. Adam Dupay, he's okay. Uh, <laughs> we have Odo, Tiffany Bao, Davide Bazzarotti, uh, Jeffrey Crowell, yeah, Ray Yammer, Noel Pointer, and Alexandros Capravellos. Give it up for this amazing crew. So, we had a, a, an interesting issue this year with the room. We had to fight with uh, the fire marshal and we had to fight with um, the, that balance of trying to get people in the room without getting the event shut down for risk of everyone dying in a fire. Um, so, Dark Tangent is interested in a show of hands. How many people went by the room this year? Woo! Woo. Awesome. All right, next year, make sure to spend even more time there. We have a lot of interesting stuff planned if, of course, we are invited back. Yeah, Absolutely. Um, all right, so I'm going to move on to announcing the winners, but as I do so, keep in mind that you can be up here as well in a couple of years with enough practice, enough work, enough perseverance. You can take their place, and you can take our place. You're the future. Yes, please take our place. All right. So, without further ado, let's move on to our winner. So, in third place, we have Hacking from Taiwan, HitCon. So... Third place, just wave. Oh, all right. We're doing it. Third place, run through. Jump around. Good job. Here. High five. High five. All right. All right. Give him a hand. Get out of here. Good job. In second place, uh, they asked me to announce them as first place, but I cannot do that. Uh, the Blade Parliament of Poning. Good job, guys. Good job, give them a hand. All right, in first place, with a motto of when research means meets hacking, Defcore Root! All right, so we will now uh, confer the black badges onto our winners. There are more than eight of you here. <laughs> um, we will confer the black badges onto eight of these uh, brilliant hackers. So give them one more round of applause. <laughs> and let's do this. Final round of applause for Defcore Root! Thank you all. We hope to see you next year. And remember, obey the order of the overflow.
my grifter living with my you? phone back. I was going to say, is that yours? It's ours now. Um, so again, uh, thank you to all of the organizers and all of the contestants, um, not only um, for you know, designing and, and competing and all these things, but also for creating a really cool atmosphere around DEF CON when you see these folks uh, and the level of focus that they have, whether that be, um, you know, on hacking some of the most complicated systems that these guys can craft for them or the dedication they put into a tinfoil hat. Um, you know, we love, we love seeing it and, uh, and it makes us love DEF CON. So thank you again. It truly takes, I think I put in the program, over 15, 1,600, 1,700 people to put on the contests, uh, the goons, the villages, and, uh, and you can see the departments here. We have almost 450 goons just to try to make the, uh, the, the departments work. Um, and so you can see all the departments that we have, and I'd just like to give a round of applause and a special appreciation just to all the goons that work year-round to get ready. So when, when people talk about it, we really exist to try to provide that platform for everybody else in the community to run their event. And you can see it takes a, it takes a lot of people um, and a lot of dedication. So we have uh, some goons on the way uh, retiring and we have some new goons coming in and we just want to call out um, the black ba or the gold badge. When we retire, when you, when you retire, let me rephrase this. If you've served for 10 years, uh, it, DEF CON, for more than 10 years, you get a gold badge. And the gold badge sort of acts like a black badge in that um, you put in your time, you've got the scars, um, the psychic wounds, um, and so you, we will bring you back. You can come for life, right? You're always one of us um, you know, when you're with the walking wounded <laughs> of the goons. And so um, I just want to say uh, thank you to all the goons of the past that have uh, done that and retired. You're always welcome. And then I want to welcome the new goons who don't know what they've gotten themselves into. <laughs> Is a major malfunction here? So we have a QM stores, and if you, if you think about who's in here the longest, um, even longer than the knock, the knock has to get equipment. Well, they have to pick the equipment up from somewhere, and that's our QM stores. And so uh, we have a little story here where the QM stores, we have warehouse space all over Las Vegas in multiple places, and we have all these semi-trucks that swoop in and bring literally thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds. And, and I think last count, we had like over 60 pallets of equipment. Yo, pallets. Um, and so this year, um, you might have seen online, we have our poor projectors, poor, poor projectors, one one three zero six two five seven and sixty nine, which tells you something that we have over a hundred projectors. And uh, there was a little bit of a mistake. We got a call that said, "Hey, um, four of your projectors all just failed. We need more projectors." Well, that's that's a why a what a coincidence. Um, eighteen volts. You don't want to plug into the HDMI port that is expecting five volts. <laughs> or it lets all the smoke out. <laughs> and so here's our, our Pelican case where the wrong voltage uh, plug was plugged into the HDMI distribution block and they all died. So we're going to pour one out for the projectors. Okay, so. <laughs> yeah. So uh, <laughs> next year we're going home. We're going home next year to Paris and Bally's, a place we know and love, um, except we've kind of grown up a little bit. And so we've had to expand a little bit. So we're plugging into Planet Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. So instead of forcing you out into the orb for 10 minutes or so, we're hoping we can get that down to like maybe a minute. 
Uh, less cancer. So next year, we're hoping to have more square, the same or more square footage, uh, three hotels, maybe a fourth if we have to, but we're going to be back at the Paris Ballets, plus Planet Hollywood, more, hopefully, workshops, and uh, that is what I've got to say. Oh, one last thing that's not on the slides. In case uh, you're keeping score, last year I talked about this desire to expand the DEF CON culture overseas, and we were talking about maybe doing a DEF CON China. We did that. It happened. Those are the people that actually win. Um, so we tried a DEF CON China. It worked. We were planning for 600, and we got 1,400. It was a huge success. And so don't be afraid. We're doing DEF CON China again next year. Uh, we want to get you involved. And so we have DEF CON China t-shirts here that are like electroluminescent, and they light up. We don't know yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so uh, our friends over here from the other communist nation of Cuba is jealous that the nation of China has, uh, has got us. So our other communist overlords here want us to come to Cuba. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. I don't want to say goodbye, but I have to say goodbye. We're going to put everything online. We're going to get everything... And uh, I hope to see you at the bar downstairs. Thank you so much for an amazing year. DEF CON 26 is over.